Hi, thanks for joining me. First and foremost, recently I hit 200 subscribers and I am over the moon. I really, really enjoy making these sorts of videos and it's so nice to know that so many of you enjoy watching them. Um, so a massive, massive, massive thank you if you are subscribed. It really means a lot to me. Anyway, as I said, at 100 subscribers, I'll say it again now, onwards and upwards. Uh, the next milestone, I guess, is 300 subscribers. The aim is to get there before the end of September. That would be amazing. Anyway, let's get stuck into this problem. It's to do with matrices. I think this is my first matrix problem on the channel. But yeah, let's get stuck in. We have a non-empty subset of the reals, which is called u. It's non-empty and finite. We want to show that for any number n bigger than or equal to 2, the set of matrices um, m and u has average determinant 0. So this set here is simply the set of n by n matrices where each element is some number in u. And we, by average determinant, we simply mean whenever we take the determinant, or, or if we take the determinant of each of the matrices in here and look at the average, we're going to get 0. Okay, so if, you're gonna have, if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go. And I'm going to go over a solution. Okay, the solution to this is quite neat. neat. It uses a property of the determinants that whenever you interchange two rows or interchange two columns, you're going to change the determinant of the matrix, the, the sign of the determinant of the matrix. Okay, so if you swap two rows of the matrix, you're going to put a minus sign in front of the determinant. Okay, so let me answer this by firstly defining three subsets of MNU which partition it. So M at M0, M plus, and then minus. So this is simply the set of matrices M in M and U for which debt M equals zero. Okay, this is going to be a similar set, but the set of matrices in M and U which have positive determinant and the set of matrices which have negative determinant. Okay, now firstly we can sort, well firstly thing to note is these three sets partition M and U because uh, U is a subset of the real so the determinant of any matrix in this set is going to be real, hence sort of the trichotomy says that uh, M and U is just a disjoint union of these three sets here. Cool. Now firstly look at this top set. When we, look at, when we sum up the, the determinants of the matrices in this set, we're just adding up a bunch of zeros. So it's not going to con contribute anything in terms of uh, when we're working out the average on the numerator. Um, so remember, to work out the average, we're going to add up all the determinants and then divide through by the number of elements in uh, the set, or how many elements are in the set here. Well, we've got, let's suppose, little u is equal to the cardinality of u. So the number of elements in u is we're going to call little u. And then for each element in the matrix M, we have u different numbers we can choose. And because it's an n by n matrix, that means there are n squared elements. So all in all, the number of matrices in this set here so is going to be n squared times u. Okay, and we'll see at the end of that is quite uh, irrelevant. But for the purposes of this, that um, this is uh, what am I trying to say? For the purposes of what I'm about to show you, uh, it could be neat to think of it like this. Okay, cool. So we're going to work out the average determinant. So it's going to be the determinant of the matrices in this guy added up, plus the determinant of the matrices in this guy added up, and the determinant of the matrices in this guy added up, divided by n squared uh, times u. But because we're adding up a bunch of zeros here, this is not going to contribute anything to anything in the sum of the numerator. So we only need to consider adding up the determinants of these two guys. But I'm going to show that this sort of cancels with that. Okay, so take any matrix in M+, plus, i.e. its determinant is greater than zero, and then switch, and take any two rows you want, and then switch, switch them. Now, because, oops, because the determinant of the matrix is greater than zero, uh, it means the matrix is invertible, which means those two rows or columns that you take won't be the same, because if they were the same, then the matrix would have determinant zero. Anyway, they're going to be different, so when you swap them, you're creating a new matrix, and in particular, you're putting a minus sign in front of the determinant, so you're getting a matrix in this set here. Okay? And similarly, when you do essentially the same process as here, you take a matrix, you switch the two rows, you're now going to get a matrix with positive determinant. So you can convince yourself there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets here. And in particular, if you take any matrix in this set here, you can find a corresponding matrix in this set here, which has determinant with negative sign. Okay, so when we add up these guys, we can find a corresponding one here, uh, matrix here, which has 
negative that determinant. So when we add these two up, we're going to get zero. So we're going to get zero plus these two things together give us a bunch of zeros. So all in all, our average, uh, let's call it, I mean mu, is going to be the, a bunch of zeros from this lot here, which is going to be zero, plus whatever this is here. So the sum of the determinants of m plus. Well, it's really diagonal writing, let me write it properly. So mu is going to be zero plus the sum of the determinants in m plus, plus the sum of the determinants in m minus, all divided by n squared times u. But because of the argument I just provided, the sum of the determinants in this set here is going to be exactly the negative of the sum of the determinants in this set here. So I can swap this for minus, so z plus. So on the top I'm getting 0 divided by n squared times u, and that's of course 0. Okay, so I hope that has made sense. We've taken what seems to be quite a difficult problem, and when you first see it you might go, oh, let me try with n equals 2, and u is a very small set, and try all the different cases. But this very neat trick shows that there's some sort of one-to-one -one bidirection. So you don't actually have to work out the, the value of this thing here, you just know that the corresponding set m minus is going to have a sum, the sum of its determinants, the negative of this thing here. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you aren't already subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. Onwards and upwards, as I said, 300 subscribers by the end of September. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.